Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. Welcome to my video for the December 2023 Spellbinders Club Kit Hop hosted by LV Handcrafted. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to use and create, and then find out how to hop along to the next video. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. For the past few months, I have been participating in just a casual collaboration video hop each month featuring the latest Spellbinders Club kits. Lynn, who is LV Handcrafted here on YouTube, hosts this each month and it's been such a fun time creating with my new club kits and seeing what others have made. Make sure that once you're done with my video that you hop along to the next video in the hop. I do have it at the very top of that description box below. I hope you'll go visit everybody, see what they created with, and leave them some love. Spellbinders is kind enough to send me some kits to play with each month and share with you here on my channel. I get the large die of the month, the stitching die of the month, and the clear stamp and die of the month. For December 2023, the large die of the month is called Cheers to Us. It has a wine bottle, some glasses, and lots of accessories to jazz it up. Here is an idea of a card that you could create with it. I think this would be great for an engagement party or maybe the New Year's, some celebration you might have coming up. The stitching die of the month for December 2023 is called Stitched Love. I love this big rounded border. And although today I'm going to be using the clear Stampin' die of the month, we might be using this on our card as well. Here's a look at a card created with these dies and how it could possibly go together. And then finally, the one that I'll be using today, like I said, is the clear stamp and die of the month. This is called Big Love, and it comes with this nice scripty love stamp, and then some smaller ones to go with it, and coordinating little accent stamps. The die set cuts out all of the pieces, and they even included a little strip for cutting out the sentiments. Now, if you're interested in finding out more about these clubs or any of the other mini clubs that Spellbinders has, I will have links down in that description box below. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools I use, but as always, if you ever have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started with the stamping and this first piece of cardstock is bubblegum pink and I cut it to 5 inches wide by 6 inches tall. I did discover when I held the frame up to a standard A2 size card that that was larger so today's card would probably need a 4.5 by 6 inch envelope. I'm going to start by stamping the love sentiment stamp on this piece and I just wanted to cover it up. I'm using bubblegum pink for kind of a tone on tone look. You could also definitely use watermark ink for this. And hindsight being 2020, I probably should have went with a watermark ink. When I stamped this the first time, I did think mm, that's a little dark, but I kept it up and I filled this piece completely with that just to give it some interest in the background. Now you'll see later I don't end up using it but I did want to show you that we all sometimes start with one idea in our head and it doesn't always end up that way. And hey that's okay it's your card. Now the rest of the stamping that I'm going to show you I did end up keeping for the final card. This round here I used the love sentiment once again and the three hearts from the stamp set. Originally I was going to stamp all of this in the watermelon ink, but then I decided that I wanted the love word to look a little bit different than the hearts, so I brought back in bubblegum for the sentiment. 
I got all of the stamps inked up, being careful not to over ink the pink onto the red or vice versa. And I noticed after the first stamping that the watermelon ink needed to be stamped again. I think my pad's getting a little too dry. Once I had those all stamped, I brought in lime zest ink and then I stamped in green the little branchy elements from the stamp set. Now this ink pad was juicy enough, but I decided I wanted the green a little darker, so I did ink it up and stamp it two times. I chose VersaFine Onyx Black for the sentiment. I think that this always gets good detail, especially when the font is kind of thin. Once that was in place, I got it inked up, and you'll notice when I stamp this that I don't use a pressure tool. I just use my fingers and tap along it. I lifted up the lid to make sure it was okay and thought it needed a little bit more pressure, but then it looked really good, so it was time to take all of these off camera and do the die cutting. To add some dimension to the card, I did cut four extra copies of the word love and the largest heart in white. To get all of the pieces layered together, I brought in my Barely Art liquid glue. Not only will this allow me some wiggle time to get everything lined up nicely, but when I go to do the love words, that fine tip is going to help me easily put glue on that thin font. Now once these were all layered together, I did set them to the side for about 5 minutes to dry. While that was drying, I wanted to work on the card base, so I brought in the scalloped rectangle die and I brought in a piece of white cardstock that I cut to 10 inches wide by 6 inches tall. And that is just so when I fold it, it's going to be the same size as that piece of pink cardstock. I did use my score buddy to get a score line and a nice crisp fold. And then for the card base, I want it to be shaped. So I make sure I know which edge is the fold edge. And then I'm going to tape the big scallop die onto that, making sure a little bit of the left hangs off of the edge of the card. I taped it in place with some scotch removable tape. And then I took both these pieces off camera to do the die cutting. I did notice on the card base that some ink from when I die cut the sediments got onto the front, but no worries because I'm going to be putting this pink piece over that. The layered die cuts were all dry, so I wanted to put the card together, and this is when I realized mm, I am not liking that background. That is way too dark, and it's hard to see the word love on that. But good news is there is another side to this cardstock, so I just flipped it around. To get this onto the card base, to get in all those little nooks and crannies, I used my Barely Art glue again, and then just made sure to line these layered up right together. And you'll see here from the front, it looks like a completely scalloped card, but then on the inside you'll see there's still a little bit of an edge to keep that fold. Now it was time to figure out where I wanted everything to go, and this probably was the most difficult decisions I had to make for the card. It did take a little extra time, but I sped it up here. I wanted the heart to go in the middle of the O and the little branches to peek out behind it. The other two stars I just adhered flat down to the card base. And then to make sure that everything would line up correctly, I put a little hinge of removable tape on the love word and then I would just lift that up, add a little glue to the back of my branches, and then once those were in place, I added glue to the back of the word love and got that adhered down. I used a couple clear stamping blocks to press down on that layered piece just to make sure it was nice and sealed to the card front. And then I added glue to the back of the heart and set this aside again for about five minutes to dry. Next, I figured out where I wanted the Happy Valentine's Day piece to go, and I decided to put it to the right of that flat heart there on the left. Now, because some of it hangs off the lifted upwards, I do have a little foam tape over there on the right. I added some liquid glue across that piece and got it put in place. I wanted to add a little sparkle, so I chose the white gems from Spellbinder's Color Essential Gems Crystal Mix, and I placed five flowing from the upper left down to the bottom right. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this quick and easy shaped card using some of the new Spellbinders Club Kits of the Month. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit the next creator on the hop by clicking on the link at the top of the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.